<laughs> okay. So, um, So one of the things about two is that you don't start into it <clears throat> until you've gotten down to your mm -hmm. Dantian. And then, <laughs> and you're straight there. And then you go into this and it's that, um, it's going into the squat, which spreads your arms and then you come up. So yeah. there is a, I mean, you're bending all the way down. Bend, 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 bend. And actually, then this is the extend. Mm -hmm. So you're actually going through a transition as you as you um, connect with the, the lagong point and the hands and the arms into the, your extension, your straightening section. Okay. So the bend is here. And then this is actually straightening. Coming up the straightening. And then when you start going down, what's- your So you're angular. here at the end of the straight. Yeah. So this is bend. Can you see my elbows bending? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, okay. I think I was just overdoing the bend, you know, because I was here uh -huh. and then I was coming down until the elbows were almost at a 90 degree. Yeah. Point. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is going to help you with that okay. whole thing. <laughs> Sounds good. So we'll, we'll go, but a good question. Good question. Anyone else? Bill or Joanne? Um. I'm going to keep my questions to myself at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, how are you doing with uh, uh, the many positions we worked on last week? Yeah, I, I have been uh, doing, getting enough practice in that I do have several little points that I'm unsure of. Uh huh. But um, maybe as we get further into the lesson, I'll bring some of those up. Do they have to do with the specific movements? Um, well, I guess in in uh, four, I'm not clear on the breathe. I'm. I think I'm trying to do too much in four. <laughs> um, as I bring my hands up, so the the connection points there are a little vague. As I get my hands up, and I'm trying to do the byway, and you know, coming down, so that would be one probably where I'd have the most uh, fogginess <laughs> to the extent of what we know right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... So, with just to, to briefly review that, so we, we're, we're a last movement of, of three is to your left, and then you're coming up to the top, and then you're going down, bending, straightening, bending. straightening and you're inhaling on the bend and exhaling on the straightening. Okay, that's that's good. Yeah, I, I think I actually was doing that reasonably well. Yeah. So the the so the breathing goes back to what you just described. So th right now three, when we're doing the stretching, when we go into um, six and are uh, 
three and nine. Nine, nine and twelve, or nine and <laughs> nine and three. Yep. We're inhale, we're inhaling as we're stretching in that one. So that's a little bit different feel than the others. Right. Three, the breathing is opposite. That's correct. Yeah. And that started to feel mm -hmm. right where it but that the first practicing that it felt wrong <laughs> to, uh -huh. to have the breathing in that pattern, but that's starting to feel really good. Good. If you can really get the focus so that you are breathing, you can feel that you are breathing into the spleen and the liver uh, in three, that really makes a difference. Hmm. I, I uh, can't say I have that feeling yet, but I'm thinking about that. <laughs> yep, uh, well, that's good. The other thing with three, what I started doing at first was had my hands really facing each other like this. Uh, <laughs> and I noticed in, in the, in, uh, as you're doing it, your hands are more facing towards, towards your body. And um, I started doing that and it made it, made it feel better, but I don't remember a conversation about that. I, I thought at first we were saying we're connecting our, our lot. So, it, it, well, every movement is not the same about that position. Um, and, and you're right. Actually, um, in three, more than, than any other, we want to make sure we have that connection here before we go on into uh, the rest of that. In four, um, it is, as you come up, the arms are rotating immediately so that the elbows come in and the palms are facing you. So we're in four, we're not coming to this point at all. We never, we never go to that point in four. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the movement here is it, um, <laughs> the really important piece here, I think to understand is when you have finished spreading your energy and you feel the extent of your etheric body, this movement immediately begins to rotate the elbow down. So if I were to take my body out of, out of this for a moment, the elbow is going right down. So you get to here and yes, it, there's a little rounding. It's, we're going to talk about this today, but there, there's a little rounding as you come up. But this is where you're coming to. The arms are on the sidelines, the palms facing you. And then they rotate down, out, elbows, warmth. Did when as you bring your hands up, did you talk initially about connecting to the by way point or um, am I misremembering it, it, that? It depends. Yes, eventually, well, not necessarily particularly the <laughs> well, it is by way, but the crown of the head, yes. Um, so ideally, yes, this is going to bring the energy up to the crown of your head. Mm -hmm. Ideally, now it may not do that immediately. It may, you know, it uh, that that's something I can't. Um, if I have you here, I can actually could feel your body and and know where your energy is getting to, but um, you have to feel it how high it's actually coming to. It may not be all the way to to the crown of the head yet. Okay. But it will work its way up there as you keep that movement uh, going. Yeah. Yeah. At, at at first, when I was practicing, I was basing it on the, what I remember of the conversation. I was making this big sweeping thing up to the heavens, and and then I practiced with with your tape, and it, uh, you know got it more physically aligned. And I just want to say we have really fast internet now, so maybe you can get this energy through.
<laughs> we, we, we've we've upgraded from DSL to. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, well, that's that's nice for you. I'm glad. It, it is. I don't. I don't have to reboot three times during the lesson. Oh God! Oh God! That's good. <laughs> Okay, I've I've spilled the beans on pretty much all my questions. Okay, cool. Anyone else? No, I um a, a couple of things. One is I got a, a a pair of glasses this week with new prescriptions, trifocals. So I found that I cannot practice with my glasses on, um, given the work <laughs> we're trying to do on our eyes. <laughs> um, so that was a little like, yeah, <laughs> do the eyes and then get glasses. Um, I'm still uh, challenged uh, to doing these while standing. Um, and um, so it, it's difficult <laughs> to yeah. be trying to put this together without that. Although uh, I'm kind of increasing my ability to, uh, to uh, bend and fold sitting on a chair, but, uh, but standing up still, um, I feel like it stresses my knees too much. Yep. Um, but I, yeah, but I'm, trying to keep the so it's a little and I'm also working on the energy but I I'm I'm feeling that um I, I feel good about the my capacity to do this breathing so good okay well let's let's move on I don't want you to get bored <laughs> <laughs> I thought of you was doing that David <laughs> so all the movements of gods are circular, but ideally it is beyond that. It goes towards the movements of the arms and even the body being spherical. So what's the difference between a circle and a sphere? A circle is essentially on one plane of motion. And a sphere is essentially circles on every plane of motion simultaneously. If you're really going to get <clears throat> your arms to be spherical, you're going to have to have everything from your fingertips to the crown of your head to your toes moving internally in a spherical fashion. I should um, mention that in terms of fluid circulation in the body, any fluid, name the fluid in your body, will have maximum fluid motion inside the body generated by spherical movement. And that's it. So I'm gonna show this just on one um, posture in a moment. And then um, I will at one point have you practice a little bit on this, but work on it on your own. Um, because in learning and developing spherical movement in your body, you have to experiment to play around with this principle in the hope that the more of it you realize, the better you'll do it and the better it will be for your fluids. So why did I use that term experiment? <laughs> and that's because the nature of a true experiment is that you hope for a successful conclusion, but how does it happen or not happen? Who knows? That's why it's called an experiment. But if you start with a very positive attitude, like this experiment will work, you radically increase the chances of it working. So, <laughs> Let's look at, I'm gonna do a demonstrate this with movement two because it's, um, it, it's actually, I think, easiest to see there. So I'll do this in, in different ways. I'm gonna turn sideways at the moment because that's probably the easiest way to see this. So <clears throat> presuming we've finished one and we're going into two. So this is a circle, this is circular motion. And in that, yeah, my, my shoulder blades are moving because my arms are moving, but that movement is coming from my hands and arms. 
and Bill and Adam are shaking their head yes, so they can see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The difference is that when you um, go into a, the spherical movement, the movement is actually generated from the shoulder blades and the spine by the intent of your mind. So the movement radically changes really at that point and becomes really something else. Can you see that? Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Sort of? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I'll just do it facing this way in case that gives you any other uh, better indication. So when I do a circular movement, but then I go into a spherical movement. Yep. <clears throat> so to the degree that your arm moves it become it can become more spherical that will determine the maximum amount of fluids that you will move in your body. The fluid movement inside your body will do, will do as well as they possibly can. Conversely, less than a spherical movement and the fluid movement moves less well. So just so you understand, uh, Bagua Zhang, the martial art was uh, actually probably before gods, but gods was the first true Qigong system after Bagua that became uh, codified as a central Qigong method. Master Liu told Bruce that most likely gods was there before Bagua, but nobody knows. The tradition doesn't comment on it. What they can say is that it was done within the Taoist monastic <clears throat> Bagua school. The Taoist meditation method was done in the uh, monasteries right from the very beginning. So spherical. So I did movement two and hopefully you could see the difference um, that my arms were making as they went through that movement. So what I'd like, um, what I want to do now is actually do movement one, which is considerably more difficult to make spherical than, um, than movement two is. So <clears throat> as we go into movement one, if I'm doing simply a circular movement, Hard for me to let go of. <laughs> but basically, that's a circle. But when it becomes spherical, see if you can see the difference in that. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> you ready? Okay, good. <laughs>
a little harder to see. But it's a lot of it is what you feel in the body. But it's it's not it's not just this. It's mm -hmm. that there is that that um, <laughs> circular movement, <laughs> that spherical movement of the hands. You're actually uh, tracing the parts of the sphere as you do this. Mm. So what I'd like you to do is stand up and try one and two, just those two. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe, uh, I don't know, do a few of each, whatever you're okay. comfortable with. That was good, Joanne. Bill, remember you want to keep the elbows on the sidelines as much as possible. I realize, you know, I, I recognize that's not possible 100% of the time, but you want to go there as much as you can. Uh, it was better. No. Remember we talked about twisting? Yes. So that's part of being spherical. Yes. <laughs> so when you come up, when you first start, you've twisted in. Mm -hmm. And as you come up, your arms are continuously rotating mm -hmm. out all the way to that point. Mm -hmm. And then they immediately start twisting in, which is the difficult Movement. So, Bill, one thing I might say is uh, when you when you are coming up, that you don't want to come up to roughly upper chest level 
and then just go out to the side, which is kind of what you're doing. It's not exactly what you're doing, but it has that tendency. You're really looking for how do you round that whole movement. So you've got to go a little above where you're going to end up in order to keep the curve of the sphere going. Yeah, better. Good. And Joanne, if you can, you should, even sitting, try to extend the arms a little more. more. Okay. They're, they're not, of course, locking the elbows, but they are more, more extended. Yeah, good. Do a couple of twos for me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay, I might say for both of you, <clears throat> as soon as you get to the point where the wrists are crossed right here, you're now stretching out. So the movement is immediately mm -hmm. going this way. It's yeah. not lifting this yeah. up through okay. the center. Okay. Yep. Yep. And like I was saying, keeps the shoulders open too. Yes, keep the shoulders open too. <laughs> okay. And and as I was saying to Bill, don't don't come up to here and then just go out. Mm. This has to be constantly spherical. So there's a, there's an arc. Okay. Here. Okay. There's an arc everywhere <laughs> in the body. I'm going to try to really feel the scapula moving the arms. Much better built. When you come go out, this is the one place where we actually you're trying to open the wrist and lift the palms a little. Okay. Yeah. Good. Do you have any questions, Bill or Joanne? No, I don't. <clears throat> Can you feel that difference, Bill? Yes, I, I can feel that difference. I think one of the harder things for me is to have the scapula gradually open and close versus sort of <laughs> slam open and slam closed. Uh huh. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, but so er everything is gradual. There's no flick it on and flick it off. Nope. Parts. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely right. <laughs> Listening to Adam, that is a big difference. Yeah, uh, extending rather than yep. yeah, absolutely. Good. Sit down. So. <clears throat> I'm actually going to have you uh, in your in your practice at home. This is not so much today. You've already done um, the beginning of your experiment. And actually, another way that Bruce described it is it's kind of a struggle session. <laughs> um, it means you struggle with with it and see if you can find it, or at least try and find it. Because if you try this. You're going to be able to see some of it more clearly than you could before. So I think that's 
what you you found in this. Yeah. And we want that um, spherical movement to be present in all of the postures, of course, all the movements. So as you continue um, practicing three and four, <laughs> See what you find in spherical movement there. So obviously shoulder blades are important. And why is it important to have loose and relaxed shoulder blades? It's because your shoulder blades, if they're very tight, your arm movements are going to be compromised. And that's also going to prevent <clears throat> the transference of the energy in your legs and your torso actually going up all the way to the top of your head and all the way to your fingertips. So shoulder blades are quite important, as I think all of you already know. For many years, Bruce used to call the shoulder blades the lost joint of the body because it seemed to him that nobody knew that they had them. <laughs> when he had a simple question like, move your shoulder blades, people would look at him with a very strange, dumbfounded look. Most people think of their deltoid muscles as being their shoulders. And the truth of the matter is that your shoulders have a number of components, but the most important one is the shoulder blade, the scapula. So, I'm going to, I will go into why this is important a little bit later on. It's important to have loose shoulder blades. If you move your shoulder blades, your arm has no choice but to move. If you move your shoulder blades, your arm will move with them. You can move your elbows, your wrists, your hands, your fingers, and not have anything happen to your shoulder blades. And that is a major disconnect. One of the reasons why this is important energetically is that when the energy goes from your spine to your whole shoulder girdle, it has to pass through the shoulder blades. And the shoulder blades are more or less controlling it. The second reason is that the movement of the shoulder blades is also causing a continuous massage of your heart, especially when the shoulder blades are going forward and back. And we don't often think of that until we actually get into opening and closing the shoulder blades and they do actually move forward and back. It's very subtle, but they do move in that direction as well as side to side. <clears throat> Getting the shoulder blade movements is critical in God's plane in the clouds because without your arm movements and the smooth connection of your chi from the top to the bottom of your body and the bottom to the top, it will not be smooth. So we're gonna do a couple of exercises called shoulder rolls and these can help you release your shoulder blades. Now the normal way that shoulder rolls are done in um, almost every high school gym class and pretty much almost, almost everywhere else, is that you do it from the deltoids. You focus your attention on the top of your shoulders and you move them. But that's not what we're going to be doing. We want to make sure that the shoulder blades are what is actually rotating your shoulder. The shoulder blades can actually stretch the fascia all the way from your feet, through your back, and all the way up to your neck and your head. That stretching of the fascia actually relieves an immense amount of back pain, or can, just uh, by itself, without anything else. Another reason is that when the fascial movement happens, Qi moves through your body through various biological mechanisms. It moves through your blood and it moves through your, your nerves, but it also moves through your fascia. And the shoulder blade movement is the one way in which you can attach to the fascia, 
get it to stretch and move in a coordinated way that is not jerking or just stretching. There is stretching that is happening in a way that in the way that your shoulder blades would do that in life anyway. But also, as I just mentioned a moment ago, shoulder blade movements are very good for upper back and neck pain. And they are also very good for massaging the heart. When you're done, when they're done well, they also release the sternum where the ribs attach in front. So in other words, the shoulder blades are very, very good for releasing everything in your thoracic area, which for example, can be an excellent way to recover from a heart attack or heart surgery. These really shut down a lot of the tissue in the upper body. Then over time, this leads to other issues, discomfort, lack of movement and other problems. So shoulder rolls are done in a number of ways, but you're only going to need to do two. Moving both shoulders, going back to down and coming up the front. And the second one, one shoulder blade rolls forward towards the spine and the other goes away. And you go back and forth. So one shoulder blade goes towards the spine as the other one goes away from the spine. Now, <clears throat> if you were just to do shoulder rolls the way they're often done, you're just using the deltoids to circle your shoulders. And yeah, there's gonna be a little shoulder blade movement there, but that's not what we're looking for. You really probably can't see the difference, but if you actually begin by getting your mind to extend through your body and connect with your scapula, with your shoulder blades, and then have them move the shoulders, then it becomes really a much fuller and, and for our purposes, a much more effective movement. And eventually we'll do this in both directions. And you have to really try to keep your mind focused on the shoulder blades and not let the deltoids take over. The other one where we're, we're moving one shoulder one way and one the other, we want this to be continuous circles, <clears throat> really continuous spheres based on what we just worked on. Well, we're, I'll have you stand up and do this in a moment. And these go in both directions. Mm. But you really want these to be coming with the intent of your mind from your shoulder blade, from your scapula, not just from the muscles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Is that a question? No, guess not. Um, <clears throat> So when you're doing a movement of God's plane in the clouds, the shoulder blades have to be in constant motion. That is so you don't lift your hands from your hands, you actually lift your hands from your shoulder blades. The main point is this, <clears throat> if your shoulder blades are really tight, they will pull on the fascia of your back. If your fascia has gotten stuck or bent, it can sting as it releases, like when you pull two pieces of Velcro apart. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. What you have to do is ease up on it and just gradually get the fascia that's attached to your shoulder blades to stretch and release. Don't try and do it in one fell swoop because mm -hmm. if it's really strong, you actually will feel the fascia pulling on your neck 
and perhaps your back, and it may be very painful, which nobody really needs. <clears throat> so that, of course, is a caution against overdoing, as Master Joe would put it. So stand up. And I'm going to begin by just standing for a moment. And as we did in our early classes, really get your mind to extend through your body. And then really feel your mind connect to your scapula and begin to move both shoulders going up the back and down the front. So they come up, they rotate forward past your ears and circle down in front. You really get this going, you'll actually feel the motion in your shoulder blades pulling the fascia through your abdominal cavity. This is how you will recognize how your shoulder blades are connected to your internal organs. They're connected like rubber bands. Now try going in the other direction. Try not to let the deltoids take over. They really want to do that when you lift. Now go to the second way, the one arm towards the spine, one arm away, but driven by the shoulder blades. So one of the things you really want to be aware of here is keeping the motion continuous. And reversing it.
And remember, if you have any kind of limitation in one side, you want to move both sides within the range of that limitation. <clears throat> move one more than the other. Another way to, to do this is to take the hands out to the sides and then do it. And this, doing this one is a really good way to really feel that movement towards the spine and away from the spine. It reduces the chance the deltoids are going to get involved. I yep. Think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Your arm doesn't have to make such a big circle. Okay. <laughs> it, it's your arm isn't making any additional movement. It's just what the shoulder does. And it's going to depend on how good that connection is and how much flexibility your scapula has. So anybody have a question at this point? <clears throat> Being aware that one thing is that <clears throat> as these movements are, are going, particularly when you're doing the separate, not, not separate, but one going one way and the other going the other, that on one way you're, you're going to stretch uh, to one side and then the other one goes to the other. But when you're doing both of them, you stretch up the back and down the front or up the front and down the back. So there's, um, that additional um, piece of that to be aware of. Um, you want to keep the movement smooth. And the trick, of course, is going to be, can you make all of these continuous? Um, you're, you're transisting through the, when you're doing both shoulders at the same time, you're transisting through really three movements. One is up, over, two, and down is three. So being aware of all three of those and keeping it circular and continuous. Um, so the, the purpose of this, of course, is to release blocked places so your movement in gods can be smooth. If your shoulder blades are locked up, when you start to move, the place where your shoulder blade is locked up is where your movement is going to cease being smooth. You will have trouble going through it because your shoulder blades are locked up. It will not be because you're not following instructions. It's <laughs> going to be because your shoulder blades will not allow you to do it. So uh, as, as obviously you can uh, hear, these two things, spherical movement and the movement of the shoulder blades are very much tied together. Yeah. And they, 
are two of the things that really encourage the complete movement of the energy in the body. So um, let's see where we are here. So <clears throat> what I'd like you to do now is just to do um, six repetitions of one through four and keeping the shoulder blades and spherical movement in mind. <laughs> just a quick question. Sure. The exercise for both shoulders, can it be done with the arms extended the way? No. No. <laughs> no. Um, that's a different. Yes, that's different. And it, and it really leads to using the muscles. Okay. So no. Okay.
So um, what, what did you feel or discover in doing that? Uh, I found it easier to connect with your scapula. If you remember, I feel your upper arms, <laughs> you know, because I, I feel like it's easy to get caught up in the hands and the elbows, but you kind of miss feeling huh. energy move through the upper arms, but you, you can't move your upper arms if your scapula don't move. That's right. Um, so if you focus on that feeling, you, you can bring it back to your scapula if you start losing that. Good. And certainly from the exercises, my scapula were already a lot looser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just to, to start you know, doing the... Uh, uh -huh. In the forms, yeah. Good. So, uh, Bill or Joanne? I I do find it easy to connect to my scapula, but I noticed that um, three was more of a challenge than one, two, and four. Uh -huh. um, so I need to, yeah, I'm gonna work on that one. Yeah, for me, I found the exercise I was feeling like I was getting that connection and doing it somewhat as I got into the movements, it was uh, more difficult to, to really consistently make the connection. It's, uh, mm. yeah. Yep. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> <laughs> and spherical in number three is... That's... <laughs> <laughs> You know, though, a part of that is keeping the circle going. Actually, the sphere going with the Dantian. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Because uh -huh. I, I could see that get lost. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes difficult. The other thing yeah. I did want to mention, talking about the, the scapula connection, 
particularly in three where we're focusing on that connection to the internal organs, which is really coming th through the scapula, through the shoulder blades, has a great deal to do with where the elbows are in that movement. Mm -hmm. And if, if you um, were to watch me do this, notice where my elbows go. <laughs> They're not moving a whole lot, are they? <laughs> They're not doing this. They're not doing this. Mm. They are doing little circular movements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're they're really pretty small because uh, that connection from the scapula through the upper arm through the elbow to the hands that's where that energetic connection is that goes to the organs. As as mm -hmm. I said when I talked about the shoulder blades, the shoulder blades are actually connected to the organs like you had rubber bands between them. So what the shoulder blades do will affect, um, directly affect the organs. And you, you have to, in order to keep that connection going in and out through the arms, which is just one part of that, of course, but you still have to not lose that structural link yeah. in there. Hmm. Yeah. Um, in, the, in some of the stretches, and I'm, little fuzzy. In one of them, I thought you said the scapula are actually coming together as you're extending your arms forward. Is, was that right? Or is, are they always? You mean in, in three? Yes. They're separating in three. They're separating in three. Stand. Yep. Here. And coming back in <laughs> and separating and coming back in. Okay. Okay. Yep. Other questions hmm. at the moment? Okay. Good work. Have a good week and right. practice. Thank you, David. Thank you. Loosen up those scapula. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat>
No, I mean, I did do some of the exercise with, uh, um, with the hands and feet that we did last week. I found that very helpful, although I did try to do it standing and I, yeah, I had a, I had a hard time both because of my, uh, my knee and ankle challenges. Um, but uh, also I found that I, when I was standing, I started to grip my toes more than when I was sitting, I could really um, move the energy in the foot without that. So yeah, just my observation of this practice. You know, it's really important to not let the, when you're, particularly when you're standing, but even when you're sitting and you're trying to do this work, that you don't let the weight move towards the toes and stay there. Yeah. Because that immediately causes you to begin to, to tighten up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you yeah. can't open and close if you're sitting there trying to grip the ground <laughs> right right yeah now that's yes <laughs> so, so that's really <clears throat> so um i was thinking <laughs> we'll let adam demonstrate this for us uh, oh boy <laughs> hey, <Adam. laughs> um, i was uh, really thinking how good um this today's lesson was in terms of the form uh, because we we talk all the time about wanting the form to be circular and have curves mm -hmm. and arms. Mm -hmm. We talked about talk about that all the time, but the fact is actually that we want it to be spherical also. It's not only circles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the problem, of course, with the form is that it is a hundred times more subtle than it is in God's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it all of a sudden, um, it, it's not so obvious uh, when you arrive at it, but it definitely is something we need to, to be aware of. And of course, the scapula movement we've talked about quite a bit yes. with the two of you, so that's not something new. But um, looking at it again is never, never a bad never thing hurts. because it really opens up. So, but what I wanted you to do was to flow through the uh, first paragraph and focus on your hands deliberately. Okay. And then go through and try to focus on the scapula and spherical movement. Okay. Just see what happens for you. Sure. And Joanne will just watch you. I guess. I was trying to think if there's a way I could do this in a chair, but I don't think there is. Well, you can try. <laughs> you yeah, can I can some of it, especially if we're focusing on our hands. Obviously. I'm not going to try to move the chair around in circles, but you know, um, <laughs> do what I can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and watch Adam too. Okay. I can't see Adam at all, though. Ah, there we go. <laughs> He's speaking the frame. <laughs> <laughs> you squeezing in there, okay.
Uh, this chair, maybe you could move sure. a little bit more into the camera. <laughs> So take a moment and extend your mind through your body. Let me begin to feel your scapula before you move. Feels different. It feels um, much more of like a flow from posture to posture. Mm. Um, definitely feels. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Like you don't get caught up with where the hands are, mm. so you don't overreach or overextend. Yeah. Or fold in too much. Yep. Um, you, that was you know, clear. It feels like you 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 have a better sense of how much range you really have to hold the structure. So, you know, you know, you sparse it out better. It was, it was much more powerful. Yeah. It, it, uh, I could feel the energetic difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it just made a huge difference. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think it's a, that's an important element to mm. really work on uh, mm -hmm. making sure you're incorporating that and finding where you're not and mm -hmm. working through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely felt like there were um, places it was tough to feel that, feel that connection um, and extend your mind through the scapula. Um, like play pipa for whatever reason. I don't know if it's just the, the movement is so small compared to some of the other postures, huh. you know, and um, kind of strange, you get really tuned into like everything else going on. Yep. You know, so um, moving into play pipa, you felt like an emotional sense of anxiety about it too. Like, oh man, like, I hope I know how to do this. I was like, well, that's a funny <laughs> feeling. You know, okay, like, <laughs> let that go, you know. Um, you know, so kind of strange, you yeah. know, you get really tuned in. Huh. 
Yeah, that is strange. I, you know, the we. It's interesting you mentioned that posture because um, it it is one where we sometimes aren't clear about energetically what's happening as you as you do that as you as you shift forward to mm -hmm. start into that. And it's actually, it is a palm movement. It's an outward energy. Mm. Mm. Um, the, there, is, there is intent to make contact, mm -hmm. to get a hold, <laughs> mm. so that you can come back and do on. That's actually what you're doing there. Interesting, OK. Um, so uh, that's, a, that's, a good, uh, that's a good awareness. Mm -hmm because it leads to thinking about what am I really doing here? What, what am I trying to accomplish? Right. <laughs> uh, what's the intent here? Right. Because um, we often, th that sense in going into, so if you find often that sense of, oh, what am I doing here? I'm shifting forward, but it's kind of <laughs> nothing going on. Yeah, there's something going on. You're, you're you're going out. Right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did you see, Joanne? Yeah. I, I mean, I think the, um, the connection um, between the scapula and the hands um, can really be, yeah, felt in a different way, I think. Yep. Um, I mean, I, I, I saw it also for the little bit I did, I felt it, um, that it, it's much more um, intense. Yeah, good. Well, so that would be something to work on. Yeah. Um, so any, any questions? Um, I don't think any questions about that over the last week trying to do the opening and closing with the feet mm -hmm. um, that um it, it's kind of a mixed bag um i get a really good response uh in the hands mm -hmm. but i find it's really difficult to open and close the feet slowly yes it is you know so when you're, <laughs> you're moving through the postures especially postures that have a big transition um like going from um uh i always forget the, the full name of the monkey um, oh you know what i'm talking about yeah <laughs> yeah um going from one to the other because it's kind of such a long transition yeah uh -uh. it's like boom the feet are closed and i'm like okay well now we're gonna keep transitioning and okay open <laughs> so that's what i've been trying to Trying to work on. Yep. No, that's good. Because that is a that is a big issue with the feet. We tend to just close. <laughs> yeah. Then, then there we are. What do we do now? Right. Um, and it, it's like close, and then after that you start like clenching. You know, yep. clenching the toes and. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, one of the other things to think about in that posture though too, is uh, what else might be, what else might be happening there? So you, you get to here and you go into that, that transition and this could be a throw. Mm. Mm. So that could All be right. an opening, interestingly enough. Oh, okay. So you could have an opening and then a closing and an opening. Right. Which, which actually would be easier in a way because you're not right having to close all the way around. Right. Um, it also, to my mind, makes a little better sense of what you're doing there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'll play with that. Yeah, good. Anything for you, Joanne? 
I don't think so. I think I'm kind of yeah, in the same place around the feet, but uh, <laughs> having more of a challenge since I can't stand on them as much. But uh, right. yeah. Okay. Or pulse. Or pulse monkey. <laughs> Thanks, David. Step back and drive the monkey away. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> these names down one day. It's <laughs> kind of the animal, right? I feel pretty good. That's close. <laughs> good. Good. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Good class. Yeah, I found um that uh, there was a lot in the um, in gods that I felt like the work we've done um, and the form really helped. Mm. Uh -huh. um, but I just kind of found myself going, oh, oh yeah, uh huh. You know, those little aha uh -huh moments where you're like, yeah, we, yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. just that reminder. Yep. Mm. That we have. So I think that's, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that fed that a lot. Yeah. I think that's, uh, will be true for you guys for a while in the beginning of God's. Um, and we will get to some places that we haven't talked about before, too. Uh -huh. sure. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, have a good week. Very good. Thank you. Practice, practice. <laughs> practice, <laughs> practice. Yeah. There's a lot oh, here. Feel better, you Joanne. Thank you. No, I feel better. Each, each, yeah, I feel better. So, um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Still trying to explore, yeah, what needs to be done next. But at least the swell. This is actually this morning was the first morning I woke up without swelling in either the without extreme swelling in either the ankles or the knee. The knee oh. went. The knee felt better, and then the ankles got you know. Uh, the fluid is trying to figure out where to go sometimes, and then I got to work more. Around. So. <laughs> anyway. uh, all right. All right. Bye bye. 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 Hang in. <laughs> Stop.